welcome back to my channel for a book Rex video with a little bit of a twist. So as you can tell from the title, we're going for those weirdly specific book recommendations. You know, when you're looking for something that just has like a few very specific elements that you want to read about, but doesn't necessarily fulfill a specific genre, instead includes a certain type of main character in a certain type of setting that gives you a certain type of vibe and you don't know how to search for that and you just have to ask people until they hopefully give you a recommendation that fulfills it. So I'm going to try and do that today. I asked on Instagram, on Instagram stories, for your weirdly specific book recommendation requests and I'm going to attempt to give them to you. So of course these books aren't all necessarily weird and the requests themselves aren't necessarily weird, it's more the fact that they are weirdly specific than anything else because actually a lot of these um, recommendations are just things I think we all need to be reading more of whereas others are are actually a bit weird and I kind of love it. So yeah, I'm going to recommend you some books based on your requests. Now there were quite a few responses to that question on Instagram so I can't cover them all in one video but I'm going to attempt to do my best to cover a few of them and if you'd like a future video like this let me know. Without further ado however let's get into your weirdly specific book recommendation requests. The first one is just one that I absolutely loved the description of. It was like genuinely super weird and in the best possible way. And that is a book that will make me feel the same way as Darcy's hand flex scene in Pride and Prejudice. Now I think we all know that this person is referring <laughs> to the 2005 film adaptation of Pride and Prejudice starring Keira Knightley in which Darcy briefly touches Elizabeth's hand to help her into a carriage and then walks away flexing his hand because of that simple touch. It's all over TikTok, it's all over the internet, everyone's gushing about it. However, I do think this is one where it is going to depend on the person whether a book gives you that feeling or not because it is that kind of romantic tension and sheer sort of excitement over um, a new love interest that I think is what's going on there. So I've got two books here that I think make me feel the way that Darcy's hand flex in Pride and Prejudice does and I hope they will also deliver that feeling to you. So the first one is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert which is a contemporary romance novel about a young woman named Chloe Brown who is dealing with fibromyalgia and chronic pain on a daily basis but you know she's living her life until she almost gets hit by a car or she just misses getting hit by a car and she feels like I need to start living my life again because I've sort of secluded myself away after I lost a lot of my friends and my partner. So she gets a new flat, she moves away from the family home where she can work and makes a list of things that she wants to do to get a life, although of course she starts to address this idea and kind of her concept of what mean getting a life means during the book. In this flat she meets the like factor or superintendent of the building called Red, a young artist that's going through all of his own stuff, getting out of an abusive relationship, sort of having cut himself off from the art world for a long time, and they begin a budding romance. Red ends up being enlisted to help Chloe complete her get a life list and it is so charming, it is so heartwarming but it is also sexy and I would highly recommend it. We then have, because I've attempted two for each of these just in case you've read one of them already, The Lady's Deception by Susanna Craig which is a historical romance novel. So this one is set in Ireland and it's between a young English woman and a young Irish man who is a lawyer and our young woman is being forced to marry someone she doesn't want to marry by her brother and ends up running away from home in an attempt to find a lawyer to get her out of the position she is in to sort of free up her inheritance um, before she comes of age, which I think is 21, meaning that she won't have to rely on her brother anymore. But when she ends up arriving in the city, the lawyer mistakes her for the governess he was trying to hire for his two younger sisters and she decides actually the best way to escape her brother and bide her time until she can live an independent life is to pretend to be this governess and you have sort of mistaken identities, a slightly odd situation where two people come together and obviously end up falling in love. I actually do think the male protagonist in this book has 
somewhat Darcy vibes. He's not the same, but you know, he has some Darcy vibes. Um, and that's coming from someone who is entirely a Miss, Mr. Bingley lady. Um, <laughs> but I was fully invested in their romance. I thought it built up in a really sweet way. There was some really nice tension before it eventually got to where it was going. And I really, really enjoyed it. I then had a very simple two word request, which was short and strange. Full stop, full stop. <laughs> which I love because I love short strange books and it was difficult to narrow it down so I've gone for two here that hopefully you might not have read and will enjoy. The first one is The Beauty by Aliyah Whiteley. This one is very firmly um, situated within the horror genre but it is like the weirdest freaking horror novel I've ever read. I couldn't stop thinking about it for the longest time. I dreamt about it. I was so creeped out and unnerved by it but I honestly would go back and reread it. It's a very weird feeling. Aliyah Whitley is a very very beautiful writer and this one is set in a sort of apocalyptic future where all the women have died. No more women were born in the last generation so we only have men and these men are basically living in small communities waiting till they all die and the human race is wiped out. But one day upon the graves of the last women who passed away in their community start to grow these mushrooms. And honestly, like, I can't say any more than that because I don't want to give away spoilers. But it is very strange, although also very lyrically written. However, if you don't like mushrooms, don't read this book. And if you also probably don't want to give up mushrooms for a few months, like I had to after reading this book, don't read this book because I got back into mushrooms, but I had to take a break. We then have Down the Rabbit Hole by Juan Pablo Villalobos, which is definitely a little bit less scary, although no less strange. And this book is about a young boy who is the son of a drug lord, or the leader of a drug cartel. And he is a little boy, and he has lived his entire life not knowing the world is any different from what he has experienced. So to him, it makes perfect sense that his dad is basically this super rich man that tons of people respect um, and bow down to because he leads this drug cartel and he's never been denied a single thing as a little boy, you know, he lives in the lap of luxury. But he also has a very strange outlook on the world because of his upbringing. And the strangeness is also added to because it is from the narrative perspective of this young naive boy who doesn't know anything different and it's really well written. We then have a request with only a few stipulations and that is an emotional high fantasy which is literary, driven by a female main character and also features a romance, although um, it was stipulated that they did not mind whether it was MF or FF. So I actually have one of both. And the first one is Fires of the Faithful by Naomi Kritzer. So I'm using the definition of high fantasy in that it's set in a world that isn't our own, which this is. It's set in a fancy world which sort of has allusions to parts of like world history. There is definitely allusions to sort of like Renaissance Italian culture, um, but it's very much its, its own world. And it's about a young woman who lives in a music conservatoire. So she is a musician and she is under the tutelage of the other musicians at this mu music conservatoire with um, a collection of other girls. But everything starts to change when a new girl arrives at their conservatoire who is a practicer of the old religion. And this is a world in which there is serious religious segregation. There is the mainstream religion, then the old religion, and those that practice the old religion are ostracized and condemned and I think it is in effect illegal in this world to practice the old religion. So in secret they all start to explore the old religion with this girl until these people from the church come to investigate their music conservatoire and everything once again changes once more. I don't want to say any more because it is a book full of like political unraveling, about questioning the system, about fitting in, about finding your place and who you are and there is a female-female romance but it's not necessarily the central element of the story. Like I wouldn't necessarily say this is a romance fantasy, it is a fantasy that happens to have a romance in it which slowly unfolds over both books because it is a duology. It's much more of a politically focused fantasy novel and it's really beautifully written. It has a lot of those like historical illusion illusions I mentioned so it's very atmospheric and I think it would come under the kind of book you're looking for. Similarly, I think you might like Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobbs. This is the first in Robin Hobbs' Rainwild Chronicles, which is part of her larger ongoing series, The Realm of the Elderlings. 
And this is one of my favourite fantasy series. It is so beautifully written. Like from page one, I was in awe of the writing. I was so absorbed and I could see everything so vividly and I love the detail in the descriptions. It's also multiple perspectives. So there are female main characters, but there are also male main characters. It's not exclusively female male characters, but there are a number of very strong, very unique, very interesting female lead characters who are involved in their own romance stories and I definitely say this one is quite emotional in a lot of different respects. Um, obviously I don't want to give anything away but I would say it fulfills these categories. And at the beginning of this novel we have the hatching of a new brood of dragons, the first sort of brood of dragons to hatch in this world for a long long time. But when they're born the excitement that came with their hatching immediately dissipates because they're not born as they were expected to be born. They are not strong, they are quite weak, they are not the dragons of old that people expect, so they don't want anything to do with them and they decide to get rid of them, they decide let's just send the dragons away, let's, they can find somewhere else to live, you know, they can't fly, they're not what we wanted, send them back, which is obviously pretty horrible, so they enlist a group of people to take these dragons to a new home of some sort and most of the people they enlist to take these dragons are people who are also on the outskirts of society who are discriminated against that aren't particularly loved or wanted by their community so it deals a lot with issues like that it's really beautiful I love the dragons I love all of their perspectives and it's the first in a four book series. Back to something with a number of different stipulations and that is a Victorian era mystery romance with lots of banter. I love that little um, adage at the end there. So again I have two of these, one which is more focused on the romance and one which is less focused on the romance but there is still an underlying romance. And the first one is A Study in Scarlet Women by Sherry Thomas which is actually a retelling of Sherlock Holmes. So it's obviously a retelling of the beginning of the Sherlock Holmes you know adventures but with a female Sherlock and I freaking love that concept. There's not enough like gender switched Sherlock Holmes retellings. I love Elementary on the television which has a gender switched Watson character but this has gendered switched Sherlock and a gender switched Watson. So naturally because this is a Sherlock Holmes retelling it's very focused on the mystery elements of the story. I love our Sherlock Holmes protagonist who's actually called Charlotte but uses the pseudonym Sherlock Holmes in order to conduct her investigatory business without anyone realising she's a woman and there is a man in her life to whom she is clearly interested in having a romantic relationship with and it's very slow build and slowly hinted at throughout the first novel but the groundwork is very much set for then that to evolve during the rest of the series and they have fantastic banter between them so we definitely recommend that one. If you are looking for something however that's much more focused on romance then I thought I would recommend My Dangerous Duke by Gaylene Foley. This was a recent read for me which is very much a historical romance novel, like the romance is primary in this book but it's also a mystery swashbuckling adventure which I loved. At the beginning of this book our protagonist is kidnapped, made to get very drunk and then given as a gift to our duke who is our romantic interest. However nothing nefarious happens, he doesn't take advantage of her and instead in the morning it's revealed what was happened and he decides to help find out why this happened to her and there are secret societies and superstitious like ghost stories and pirates and like I mentioned swashbuckling adventures so yeah I think that one definitely ticks the boxes there. We then have a book where the protagonist is a villain and I love this like I want more books where the protagonist is a villain and I think there's two main categories of this type of book and I don't know exactly which one this person is looking for so I've got one of both. The first one is an irredeemable villain like this book is just about an awful awful person it's not trying to understand or sympathize with them at all and then the second one is from the perspective of a character who is not necessarily redeemable but a little bit more complex and understandable and multifaceted and that even though they do horrible things you do sometimes kind of root for I'm not sure if I should say that. Um, but the first one is The Dumb House by John Burnside. This is a book I read quite a few years ago and was a big, big fan of. I talked about it a lot on my channel. But it is definitely like peak villain story for me. Like if I'm thinking of a book from the perspective of someone awful that does awful things, this is the book because they truly, truly do 
but it also manages to be quite beautifully written which is always a really interesting like contrast to the contents and this is about a man who decides to conduct experiments on his own children in order to explore language and there is murder and there is kidnap and there are mummy issues and a lot of other horrible crimes and things going on in this novel but it's really really interesting. Then we have The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis which is about a young woman living in Georgian England the 1700s who is basically about to be forced to marry someone she doesn't want to marry. She is coming to terms with the fact that she's at an age where as a woman she's expected to do certain things and she doesn't actually have full control over her life when she also ends up falling for or falling in lust, in love, with the butcher's boy, the one that delivers the meat and she's determined that they will fall in love and run away together and live an exciting adventurous life but she may have to do some nefarious things to make that happen. It's a lot of fun and really really it's a lot of fun and another one that's just very interesting by the nature of the protagonist. I did have a few more but I think I'm going to finish off with one last recommendation because I'm worried this video is getting quite long at this point and that is a retelling of mythology that isn't a retelling of Greek or Roman myths. So mythology from other parts of the world, from other cultures. And again, I have two. The first one is a middle grade book and that is Arusha and the End of Time by Roshani Chokski. So this is, like I mentioned, a middle grade book and it is such a wonderfully magical middle grade book that I think all ages can enjoy. And specifically this one is based on Hindu mythology. We have a young girl who is living a seemingly very ordinary life with her mother who runs a small museum of artifacts when she decides to try and prove to her classmates that there's a curse on one specific piece in the museum and there is unexpectedly. <laughs> there is a curse or there is some magic placed upon this which ends up putting herself and her mother in danger and she has to break this curse it turns out because she is actually a descendant slash reincarnation of a figure from Hindu mythology and it is so fantastic, such a great adventure, so enjoyable, full of lots of charming humour and I loved it. We then have an adult retelling which isn't entirely based on mythology, it's a mixture of fairy tale and mythology which is Burning Roses by S.L. Huang. So this book is a combination of Little Red Riding Hood, Goldilocks and also the legend of the archer Hu Yi from Chinese mythology and I really love the way that this book blended lots of folklore legend and mythology traditions together. I thought that was really interesting, something I'd love to see more of and it's also set post some of the events of these stories in which the characters of Hu Yi and Red Riding Hood are travelling together and it's really really beautifully written and really really interesting. So those are my weirdly specific book recommendations or at least my book recommendations based on your weirdly specific requests and I hope you enjoyed them. I hope I mentioned a book that you're interested in whether you submitted a request or not and like I said if you'd like more of these videos let me know. You can always leave your requests for weirdly specific book recommendations in the comments of this video in fact so that if you don't use Instagram or Twitter you don't have to head on over there you can do it right here in the comments and I'll collect them together but yeah until next time happy reading and I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone!